Does size matter when it comes to community choice? I think it does. For a discussion of this topic, stay tuned. Hello, I'm Russ Watson. I created Florida Manufactured Home Living to enrich the lives of manufactured homeowners and educate the public on its benefits. In this video, we will explore the differences in communities based upon size. These differences apply whether it's a land lease community or a resident owned community, but we'll use land lease for examples in this video. Understanding how size affects life in the community will help you make a decision that's right for you. As a bonus, I'll talk about ways to determine the character of a community in a park. Let's dig in. I know I've heard this somewhere lately, size matters. Many aspects of community life in a park are enabled by or prohibited by the size of the park. The Villages is the largest Florida community I know of that includes manufactured housing. A simple search on YouTube will find you plenty on this property. The largest land lease park in Florida is Colony Cove in Ellington. Listed by DBPR at 2,211 lots, it is huge. Spanish Lakes Fairways at about 1,200 lots is more representative of the largest parks. All the parks in this category are 55 plus, although some may allow limited numbers of younger folk. For more details on 55 plus, see my recent video. You might notice Spanish Lakes seems to have a mix of conventional and manufactured housing. We will have more on this opportunity in an upcoming video. Be sure to subscribe so you are notified when it's posted. Countryside is an example of a very large park. There are many waterfront homes and at 642 lots, it's quite big. The very large parks include some family parks. Lot rents in the larger resort parks are about the same as the largest parks, ranging from 600 to 1200 a month. Golden Ponds is a large community at 390 lots. It has the amenities typical of all resorts and a few of its own unique features. 55 plus dominates this category, but there are family parks this size around the state. Lot rents in these resorts range from a little under 500 a month to as much as a thousand or more. Palm Lake Estates at 204 lots is a medium sized community. In this category, there are quite a few family parks around the state. Lot rents range from under 400 a month to as much as 900 or more. This would be a very picturesque spot to hold a wedding. Ranch land is an example of a smaller community that still has a pool and social center. With 107 lots, it is in about the middle of the category. The smaller communities can range from a simple arrangement of homes in a park to exclusive resort enclaves. Lot rents range from under 300 to as much as $900 a month. Coachland Court at 35 lots is a very small park. Tucked away in the south end of Vero Beach, it lacks the appeal of the resorts. Yet for someone seeking the least expensive way to own a Florida home, these small communities present an opportunity. There are a few more wrinkles that could occur in any size community. Most Florida mobile home parks are strictly mobile and manufactured homes. But as you can see here in Spanish Lakes Country Club, some mix concrete block construction with manufactured homes. 
Another one to consider is a mix of RV lots and manufactured homes. Sand Hill Shores is such a community. Residents there tell me the RV crowd brings a party in season. A relatively new wrinkle to look at is parks where a significant number of homes are being rented by the park owner. This changes the flavor of community living in the park, but it also presents an opportunity to try before you buy. Every spring, the migration of snowbirds north diminishes the population in these communities. If you plan to live year-round, a larger community may keep going through the summer. Others, though, like a quiet season with the pool all to themselves and are better served in communities with small summer populations. Just something else to consider. Size certainly matters when it comes to amenities. In general, the larger the park, the greater the variety and size of the amenities. Of course, this also means a greater number of people using these facilities. The list of amenities does not tell the whole story, though. There are resort parks with very impressive amenities lists that are not meeting the expectations of residents when it comes to the condition of the park and the maintenance of the facilities. On the opposite end of the spectrum, there are smaller parks whose facilities are more limited that are beautifully maintained. You must shop around. Another factor that plays into available amenities is the percentage of folks living in the park that pay full price. Some folks love the big city. Lots of action, lots of things to do, and lots of people. Our larger parks are like that. The size of the larger communities makes it almost impossible to meet or know everyone. It is relatively easy to retain anonymity if that is your choice. The term neighbor is usually applied to those on your street or your block. The community may be divided into several villages or many smaller groups. The size of the community makes it difficult, if not impossible, for the entire community to get together. Dinner may mean grabbing a bite with friends at the restaurant in the park. Some folks love a small town. They prefer a slower pace in a place where everyone knows your name. Anyone in the park is considered a neighbor. Often the atmosphere is more like a large family. Like any village, the closeness means less privacy. Most of the community will know you, or at least have heard your name, within weeks of moving in. You, on the other hand, are faced with the challenge of learning all of their names. Community-wide get-togethers are frequent. Dinner may mean cooking something for a potluck. We would love to hear your thoughts or questions on community size. Just place them in the comments below. I said earlier we would talk about ways to determine the character of the community. One way to gauge a community is to ask to speak with the community manager. Ask a few questions like how many lots in the park? How many are still available for new homes? Is there an HOA and how do I contact them? How long have you been manager of the park? And some general chit chat as to what might be attractive in that particular park. When I was an HOA president, I used to get calls and emails all the time. Email gives the board member a chance to answer your questions at their convenience. This also allows opportunity for a follow-up to their response. This is a good source for information on popular activities, the social club or committee, and the general wellness of the community. Should a particular activity be of interest to you, ask for the contact information for this activity chairperson. If you get a chance to visit a park, spend some time at the community bulletin boards. These can be spread out, 
In my community, the buy and sell board is hidden in a closet. Look at the dates of management and HOA announcements. Well-run communities will be kept informed. Look for activity sign-up sheets and indication of what activities are popular. Lastly, try to get a flavor from the postings of what the community is really like. There is much more on choosing a community than can be presented in this video. If you are considering a manufactured home community, I have published an entire book on the subject. The link is in the description below. This is a first in a series of videos on selecting a manufactured housing community. If community living interests you, I suggest you review my other videos and see if a manufactured housing community will meet your needs. Just click on the channel title or my picture below. Please give us a thumbs up if you found this content useful. Thanks for watching and see you next time.